Um, how is the sound? Can you listen? Can you see? Uh, can you see the presentation? Excellent. Everything. Uh, thank you. <laughs> good afternoon or good evening. My name is Ilyana Fedorova. I represent uh, the Siberian Federal University and the Federal Research Center for Information and Computational Technology. I'm from Krasnoyarsk, from Russia. Uh, the topic of our lecture today is failure behavior of protective coatings and oxide scales for energy and aircraft, uh, aircraft applications. Uh, this topic is related to uh, safety of uh, complex technical systems such as aircraft gas turbine and other hot section elements uh, for energy and aircraft applications. Uh, I've divided uh, the lecture into three main parts. Uh, in the first part, the lecture aims to provide the general information about protective coatings and oxide scales, uh, in particular on nickel-based uh, superalloys, uh, in order to, um, uh, to protect uh, their surface integrity against oxidation and corro corrosion under uh, operating. In the second part, we will consider the problems related to interfacial adhesion quantification. Um, some example, we will see some examples from current research and experimental observations. And in the third part, uh, uh, some examples of uh, characterization of fracture behavior using fine elements methods uh, will be considered. Uh, I hope uh, that by the end of our lecture, we will uh, recognize, uh, we will be able to recognize uh, some basic terms such as uh, uh, thermal barrier coating systems, uh, TGO, thermal grown oxide, uh, uh, the type of uh, residual stresses and factor governing the magnitude and the distribution of residual thermal stresses, and problem related to interfacial adhesion quantification. Uh, the well-known uh, trend in modern energy conversion systems and uh, turbo engines is the, uh, in the increase of inlet temperature uh, that uh, leads to an increasing of uh, energy efficiency of uh, that systems. Uh, for example, uh, increasing uh, the inlet temperature of a gas turbine for aircraft application for um, uh, 900 uh, to uh, 1,250 degrees C can result in a 30% increase of uh, an uh, energy output of uh, that turbine. Uh, in, today's uh, in today's energy conversion systems, uh, structural units are required to be reliable uh, over, uh, over very long periods of time, commonly uh, 50,000, 100,000 hours. And I'd like to continue our lecture by answering two questions. Uh, why uh, uh, cotton systems are used uh, and how? Uh, hot components operating in aggressive environment are subjected to a number of uh, mode of attacks, uh, collectively termed as a high temperature corrosion. High temperature corrosion is one of the most important issues for material selection and for choosing strategy for their surface protection. The formation of corrosion products such as carbide, uh, nitride, sulfide, oxide, the most common form, uh, or their mixture, uh, in general leads to the loss of load bearing cross section, results in increased uh, precipitation, brittle in nature. Uh, I mean uh, corrosion products, uh, and finally shortens the service lifetime of components. As I mentioned before, uh, oxidation is often the most important high temperature reaction, so we will focus today only uh, the examples of oxidation. Now let's move on to the uh, second question, how to protect the structural components. There are a number of possible solutions. Uh, one of them is the development of alloy composition, uh, which provides optimal resistance to attack by corrosive gases uh, and careful selection of alloy components. Uh, other way is the development of internal and external cooling systems. 
And the third, we will focus today, the surface protection for uh, environmental degradation using potent systems. I'd like to uh, add in this list uh, two very important um, approach, two, two very important uh, points uh, of predicting, um, predicting oxidation rate. Uh, this is combination of physical chemistry and material science methodology in order to uh, predict the oxidation rate and the nature of uh, uh, corrosive products which is formed during high temperature uh, 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 such as for example thermodynamical cal thermodynamical calculation or thermogravity analysis or um, I can add also methods for of numerical simulation in order to predict the fracture behavior uh, for example using find elements methods. Um, just to uh, illustrate the first point of uh, previous slide, you can see here the different nickel-based superalloys composition, uh, which is uh, referred to different generation of uh, nickel-based alloys. Uh, what is it, superalloys? Uh, superalloys are high-performance alloys with the ability to operate uh, at um, unusually high temperature characterized by high mechanical strength, resistance to thermal creep deformation, and resistance to corrosion or oxidation. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention on the content of aluminum here. I hope you can see my mouse uh, from 5 to 6 percent uh, in order to um, form the protective oxide layer. We will see this aspect, uh, aspect uh, later. So the all alloys of all generation uh, need to, to contain um, these elements of aluminum. And for the first generation, uh, you can see uh, uh, the other elements such as rhenium, ruthenium, and afnium. This is the difference from other generation. In order to uh, in order to increase uh, the mechanical strength and uh, uh, the resistance to oxidation and corrosion. Uh, the, now let's move on to the requirement to protect the coating, the general representation. First of all, I'd like to mention the chemical compatibility uh, with substrate materials in order to avoid excessive interdiffusion and chemical reaction during the service life and uh, in order to avoid the contaminating, the contaminating product formation. Um, during high temperature exposure, sure that cotton application and composition should be uh, technologically compatible and appropriate. Uh, we always need to think about the compatibility of physical and mechanical property uh, of a cotton system and substrate materials, in particular in coefficient of thermal expansion. Uh, the process sure, should be cost effective. And very, very important property for uh, all heat resistance alloys is the ability to form a protective oxide layer on their surface, thermally grown oxide, TGO, or uh, we can use also uh, term as uh, oxide scales, it's usually called oxide scales. So thermally grown oxide or oxide scales, or protective oxide on the surface of the heat resistance allows all steels. There are two uh, the most stable oxide scales, alumina and chromium oxide. I can uh, list also silica oxide, but uh, this oxide is too brittle and never used for high performance uh, materials uh, for such application as a high temperature, um, uh, for example, aircraft gas turbine. Uh, depending on the protective layer, uh, the alloys and steels are called alumina or chromina furnace. Uh, you can see the list of uh, general requirement to the thermally grown oxide. Uh, this layer forms due to, uh, due to diffusion of oxygen and uh, formation and oxidation of uh, uh, chromium or aluminium presented in the alloy composition. And uh, I would like to uh, 
to list also some property, very important property for thermally growing oxide, such as slow growing. Uh, uh, TGO should be uh, slow growing, dense and uniform. I mean uh, microstructural and phase composition uniformity adherent to substrate, uh, characterized by appropriate mechanical properties such as strength and fracture toughness, thermodynamically stable, uh, has no detrimental phase change during high temperature operating, and uh, as uh, usually, compatibility of physical and mechanical property is crucial in order to, for example, uh, avoid the formation, the crack formation during cooling stage uh, due to uh, uh, because of the difference of the coefficient of thermal expansion. You can see two examples over here of uh, oxide scale TGO formed on nickel-based alloy, aluminum oxide, and chromium oxide formed on uh, uh, austenitic stainless steel. Uh, high temperature coating to super alloys can be divided into three categories. Two of them, diffusion and overlay coatings, are both used to protect the system from oxidation and corrosion. The third type, thermal barrier coating, protects the substrate uh, uh, from thermal degradation as well. Uh, you can see the short description of each type. Uh, uh, we will focus today on uh, the combination of first and second types. This combination is thermal barrier coating system uh, that applied to protect the surface of nickel-based superalloys in gas turbine engine. So to, uh, at the same time to protect uh, the surface against oxidation and corrosion and to reduce the heat flow. The TBC, thermal barrier coating system on nickel-based superalloys, um, is typically composed of three layers. Uh, the aluminum containing metallic bond coat, you can see here, uh, the insulated ceramic top coat, and uh, the thermally grown oxide, the thin layer, I hope you can see my mouse uh, here, that forms during high temperature extrusion due to oxygen diffusion through, through, through the pop, top coat and uh, oxidation of aluminium presented in a bond coat. So this layer TGO is often controls the mechanical behavior of whole system and uh, sometimes it uh, causes uh, the degradation of uh, the systems uh, TGO uh, forms uh, two or more, the two most important interface between uh, between uh, top coat and TGO and uh, top bond coat and TGO. Yeah, two of the most important interface uh, that always uh, control the mechanical behavior in, the, in that system. Um, I know that. Um, uh, that, that uh, it's difficult to understand this system for the first time, and I would like to show the schematic representation once again. Um, despite the favorable property and wide implementation of thermal barrier coating system, they suffer from a number of problems, including poor durability, limited lifetime, and spallation failure. So we need to um, to try to predict and to prevent this behavior. So once again, I'd like to show this system. Uh, so substrate materials, uh, actually, is a single crystal nickel-based superalloy is used. I used, you can see the typical microstructure here. Uh, so we can see uh, the cuboidal gamma prime uh, nickel-3 aluminum uh, precipitation uh, cuboidal uh, in uh, gamma phase of nickel. Uh, then uh, the second stage is the application of bond code. The composition of a bond code uh, uh, is just uh, selected to be close to substrate material. Uh, this uh, bond code uh, can be um, applied using different types of uh, thermal spray, such as vacuum plasma spray, low pressure plasma spray. Um, and the third stage is the application, deposition of uh, 
top of a ceramic top coat using, for example, electron beam physical, uh, physical vapor deposition, atmospheric plasma spraying, or it can be also spark plasma sintering, the deposition of top coat. And then uh, the thermal grown oxide forms during high temperature exposure. In some cases, it can be also initiated before uh, before the uh, apply application of top coat during pre-oxidation process in order to initiate the growth of this protective oxide layer. And uh, finally, we have our system of interest today. Um, I'd like to highlight uh, the first part of uh, our lecture. Achieving greater temperature performance uh, has made imperative the use of surface protection to extend component life and uh, the concurrent development of the advanced structural materials and coatings uh, that protect uh, the structures from uh, environmental degradation. TPC, thermal, uh, thermal, barrier, thermal barrier coating system, are applied to protect the surface of nickel-based superalloys uh, for aircraft and energy applications. TGO, thermally grown oxide, often controls the fracture behavior of thermal barrier coating system and forms uh, the two uh, most important interface between bond port and TGO and top port and TGO. Uh, the recommended groups uh, concerning the high temperature oxidation behavior and corrosion some books, uh, recommended books related to the high temperature coating and uh, thermal barrier coating system in particular. And now let me turn to the second part of our lecture, interfacial adhesion quantification. As I mentioned before, the interfacial behavior is a very important parameter, very important factor for coating systems under operating Methods to quantify the interfacial adhesion can be divided into three groups. Mechanical test and fracture mechanics approaches to characterize and evaluate uh, the interfacial adhesion, such as tensile test, uh, different scheme uh, application of bending, for point bending test, uh, micro indentation, scratch test, the second group is a group of physical methods uh, based on thermal gradient conditions uh, in order to initiate the delamination of uh, coating or oxide scale from the substrate uh, with, uh, used with uh, inside human monitoring, for example, thermogravimetry analysis. And the, the third group um, can be formed by theoretical modeling and numerical calculation. Analysis of the result obtained by different research groups shows the large distribution of the values that characterize the interfacial adhesion for uh, different system, systems. Uh, one of the parameters that can be used to characterize the interfacial adhesion is the work of adhesion. The measured values is the practical uh, work of adhesion uh, based on the classical Griffiths energy balance approach, uh, the practical work of adhesion is equal um, to the strain energy release rate in elastic case and can be also presented in terms of a interfacial toughness. Uh, here we will uh, focus only on uh, elastic case. Uh, you can see the general expression for elastic energy just uh, just to make a physical meaning uh, of uh, this uh, work of adhesion. Uh, expression for elastic energy per unit volume stored in a field or an oxide scale coating system, uh, such uh, which is equal to equal to practical work of adhesion in elastic case. On this slide, you can see uh, the examples of the distribution of the result of strain energy release rate for different systems. Depending on the conditions of oxidation and quantification methods, for listed examples, the value varies from 5 to uh, 110 joule per square meter. How this large distribution uh, can be explained? 
Uh, one of the explanations is the use of different types of loading during uh, the mechanic when mechanical test is applied. And as a result, we have different modes of fracture. Mode 1, 2, or mixture. Uh, just to replace, mode 1 is opening, mode 2 is in plane shear, and mode 3, uh, mode three out of plane shear. So, depending on mode of loading, uh, we can obtain different values. The value will be smaller for the opening mode and uh, greater for shear mode. So, for shear, uh, we need, uh, when we use uh, this, this loading type, we need uh, more energy in order to delaminate the coating from substrate. So, the difference uh, can be explained uh, uh, by uh, different types of loading. We need to pay uh, attention on for this uh, factor. Uh, the second factor is the multi-layered structure of the oxide scale or quartz systems. I'd like to show here uh, the examples, the typical examples of oxide scale formed on nickel-based, uh, for example, MCNG alloys, fourth generation of French alloys. Uh, during the thermal oxidation and 1,100 degrees C, uh, you can see the evolution of microstructure here, the, the illustration of evolution during the thermal oxidation and the final microstructure, schematic representation of final microstructure, multi-layered microstructure of oxide formed after 100 hours uh, at uh, 1,100 degrees C. So, uh, if we will use, uh, for example, to calculate the work of adhesion, uh, the elastic property of bulk alumina, so, uh, sure, we will, we will have as the euro, this euro uh, can vary from 10 to 30%, uh, for example, if uh, in using elastic modulus, young modulus, and coffee, uh, Poisson ratio. Uh, the multi-layered structure and the fragility of oxide scale uh, or coating system explains the difficulty uh, to identify clearly uh, the failure mechanisms and to choose the appropriate model to calculate the work of adhesion. Uh, the two well-known mechanisms which are acknowledged, acknowledged and used by many researchers, Regen and Buckley, are difficult uh, are difficult uh, to distinguish in real experimental life. Often they absorb the mixture, the mixture of two uh, mechanisms. So careful macrostructural analysis is needed to choose the appropriate model. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, the examples of microstructural analysis of, uh, from our experimental work. A comparison of micrographs uh, of oxide scale formed on uh, two uh, different nickel-based alloys, as uh, AM1 and MCNG. And the careful analysis uh, uh, was performed using scanning electron microscopy equipped with energy dispersive spectroscopy, spectroscopy spectrometer, sorry, uh, and uh, confirmed then uh, using X-ray detection analysis uh, at low angle. Uh, we will see uh, the, in, on the next slide the example uh, of uh, application of the sketch test for both alloys and the difference in uh, failure behavior for uh, these two alloys. Schematic representation of the sketch test, which was performed with um, my uh, research partners from Serumat Laboratory from France. So we can see on the slide the schematic representation and uh, the parameters which were used. Uh, and the summary of the result obtained for uh, different uh, samples of AM1 alloys uh, characterized by different uh, sulfur contents. So we absorbed the clear tendency uh, of uh, increasing of work of adhesion. Uh, with, uh, for example, when we have the low content of sulfur, uh, the oxide layer is more adherent to the substrate. Uh, you can see here uh, the bright points. Uh, we can see the alloy surface. 
and the duct uh, is the oxide layer, TGO, thermally grown oxide, formed after uh, high temperature oxidation. Uh, so we can see clear tendency uh, to um, decrease and uh, 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 critical load. Critical load is the load when uh, the first uh, the first um, delamination uh, is appeared. And uh, the different behavior uh, the different behavior was absorbed for MCNG alloys. Uh, first in time, the fracture occurs between the internal alumina layer and the outer spinel. Uh, so uh, we, 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 have, uh, uh, we have absorbed two different critical loads for two different interfaces. Without the careful uh, microstructural analysis, uh, it can be difficult to distinguish and understand uh, the result, analyze the result uh, after scratch test. Uh, it just for general uh, understanding, for general uh, meaning of physical uh, meaning of uh, work of adhesion, uh, th this formula, uh, this expression uh, was used in order to calculate the work of adhesion. And uh, the summary of uh, result for both alloy, you can see uh, the different value of uh, work of adhesion for different interfaces for two alloys. Uh, here for IM, uh, I, AM1, this interface uh, uh, was uh, the first uh, inferior. Here, the other interface. You can see uh, more detail in this paper. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the crucial points, uh, the difference of the um, mechanical and physical property of bulk materials and uh, oxide scale or coating system that it was deposited. Uh, so uh, with my partners, scientific partners from Cinemat Laboratory, we have performed uh, the investigation to evaluate the property of the oxide scale thermally grown on nickel-based alloys, for example on AM1. Uh, the optimal load was found uh, uh, during I, I forgot to say, during uh, we performed a uh, uh, non-indentation test. Uh, uh, the optimal load was found and the measured value of Young modulus was then used to recalculate the work of adhesion. And uh, we have absorbed uh, about 20% of difference uh, between the value uh, obtained uh, using bulk alumina property uh, and using uh, the experimental and when the expansion the experimental variable is what is I'm sorry I am from home we have two cats two cats beside me um, and uh, uh, as um, one of uh, the important parameters. I, I would like to uh, I would like to draw your attention on uh, uh, residual stresses, grown and thermal, uh, that should be uh, taken into account when we characterize the interfacial adhesion. Grown stresses arise during oxide uh, growth. Why? The simplest explanation is the difference of atomic volumes, different uh, different crystallographic structure of uh, formed oxide uh, and metallic substrate. To go to details, uh, we need to consider the steps related to oxygen uh, absorption, formation of oxide crystallites during the initial stages of oxidation, formation of uh, columnar grains of oxide and lateral grown of uh, lateral, lateral grown stresses development. Uh, not easy to explain in two words, and uh, it's not our focus today. I will not go into detail. Uh, just to just one example to make you think: uh, for the materials used in heat exchangers, uh, for example, uh, T9091 uh, steel in steam generator. Uh, the consideration of grown stress is crucial. Uh, this stress can uh, lead to the oxide scale buffering and spalling. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, the different stage uh, of this process. Uh, these structural components, heat exchangers, are, uh, are used during long-term 
high temperature exposure without cycling. So uh, uh, operating under isothermal oxidation conditions. In this case, uh, we need to study the state, state of stress and strain during the oxide growth. Uh, for application uh, of the thermal barrier coating system, uh, the structural components are subjected to the thermal cycling and spallation occurs predominantly during cooling stage here. Uh, caused by uh, the difference of uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion of metallic and ceramic parts. Uh, the simple formula in the first approximation uh, to understand the physical meaning of uh, this uh, residual stress, you can see here on the slide. So for TBC, thermal barrier coating system, the residual thermal stress are uh, the primary importance. The growth stress arises also during the stage of, uh, during the stage of uh, heating and uh, during high temperature exposure, but uh, can be relaxed by plastic deformation and creep. And uh, some uh, examples uh, of experimental methods, mechanical tests, uh, used to characterize the interfacial behavior of coating or oxide scale. Uh, you can see on this slide, uh, inside your tensile test, for example. It can be used, uh, this uh, equipment, in the chamber of scanning electron microscopy in order to absorb directly uh, the delamination of uh, oxide scale or coating uh, during uh, tensile test. And you can see also the scheme, uh, schematic representation of a uh, bone bending test with uh, pre cracked uh, uh, specimens. Uh, this pre cracked uh, is used to initiate uh, the interfacial, uh, interfacial debonding. Uh, the scheme, uh, schematic representation of buckling test. Uh, this test is used uh, for ductile, ductile things, not for oxide or brittle oxide scale. Scratch test and uh, fallout test. So different experimental technique can be used. And uh, as I mentioned before, we need to consider the residual stress. Uh, not all, not all, not all the so to some uh, with. Uh, the stress of fracture, we need to use uh, uh, the residual stress. And in order to determine the residual stress, uh, we need to use uh, the physical methods or modeling technique. For example, X-ray diffraction at room temperature uh, or high temperature. Raman spectroscopy can be used in order to uh, measure the residual stresses experimentally, or it can be obtained using numerical simulation. So approach able to characterize the metal oxide adhesion and damage behavior of oxide scale. It can be also uh, related to coating system. We, I, I, I would like to mention both situations. A relation with high temperature behavior is required. So we will need, uh, we will see uh, some result of numerical simulation uh, in the um, third part of our lecture. And uh, highlights for the second part. The careful analysis of different factors influencing the interfacial adhesion values is needed. Thermal residual stresses or strain are generally responsible for failure of protective oxide TGO in thermal barrier coating system or in general for TGO, thermally grown oxide. Complex approaches based on strong mechanical behavior and microstructure relationships is needed to quantify the interfacial adhesion and characterize the interfacial fracture appropriately. Some recommended books for this part. Uh, some recommended papers. You can see the different aspects uh, of uh, uh, dif different aspects of this part in using these uh, references and uh, references uh, uh, of our work. I I have uploaded uh, this uh, work, these papers, these uh, course materials. You can see more in detail uh, the result obtained in our current research. And let's 
let's start our final part uh, concerning the study of interfacial fracture behavior in thermal barrier coating system using fine elements nest. Uh, first of all, I'd like to list the factors governing the magnitude and the distribution of residual thermal stresses in thermal barrier coating system, RS is residual stresses. I've divided the factors into two groups, intrinsic and extrinsic. In the first group, uh, the most important uh, factors uh, are the thermal cycling conditions, such as uh, high, uh, heating and cooling rate, high temperature dwell, etc. Interface geometry related to the thermal grown oxide thickness and shape, and uh, the tissue nature, I mean uh, the microstructure, uniformity of uh, phase composition. And uh, in the second group, I'd like to highlight the importance of the initial data for physical and mechanical properties of components of cotton system. Uh, choose it the stress strain model of materials and fi find elements model type uh, and characteristics. On this photo, you can see the, um, sorry, uh, we, uh, we performed some experience, some experience, some modeling experience uh, using um, uh, using the specimens of turbine blend, which were supplied by our industrial partners as the specimens uh, were cut and uh, prepared using um, conventional technique, prepared to microstructural observation. The specimens were supplied after cyclic oxidation test at uh, 1,100 degrees C. Um, on this photo, you can see the summary of resu results of microstructural characterization. Main types of microstructural imperfection are listed uh, here. The internal oxidation zones, uh, the non-uniformity of TGO thickness, the cracks in uh, the top coat, ceramic top coat, the cracks in thermal grown oxide, so the different microstructural imperfection are analyzed uh, using scanning electron uh, microscopy and equip it with uh, um, ADS, uh, uh, energy dispersive spectrometer, and confirmed also by X-ray diffraction. Uh, it was shown that for different samples, so uh, that the problem uh, of fracture arises for both uh, interface the interface with the top coat of coat TGO and other interface uh, bond coat and TGO. Uh, first of all, investigation of cooling rate uh, effect was carried out. It was shown that for TBC system with the regular interface geometry, I mean with the uniform thickness, the cooling rate has, has no significant effect on the residual stresses values in TGO. Five various cooling rate from stress-free temperature, 1,100 degrees C to room temperature, were considered from really slow to really fast. You can see the values of uh, minimal principal stresses, compressive thermal stresses, depending on the wave rate uh, of uh, modeling uh, representative area of, uh, after microstructural analysis. In contrast, the result of fine element mo elements modeling uh, shows that the geometry of the TGO layer and interface significantly uh, influence the magnitude and distribution of residual thermal stresses. You can see the distribution of the minimum principal stresses calculated for the regular and irregular thickness of thermally grown oxide. For example, in the case of irregular shape, the compressive stresses reach the value of uh, 2740 megapascal at the peak is the compressive stress uh, for the peak uh, or for TGO TC interface which is almost three times higher in absolute value uh, then uh, the uh, then the stress is developed at the same location in the TBC with the regular TGO layer geometry 
the, the similar uh, effect was absorbed in the peak area of the uh, TGO-BC interface, thermal bromine oxide bond forward interface. Uh, numerical analysis of uh, stress strain state and cracking behavior was performed using a two uh, dimensional model for two periodic units of thermally grown oxide profile. Regular sinusoidal undulation with a constant TGO thickness of about 7 millimeters and irregular TGO with symmetrical sinusoidal penetration in the term top port and bond port layers based on the representative backscattered electron image of localized penetration. The input data for numerical analysis are listed on this slide. Okay. The thermodynamical property of as a function of temperature and click parameters of thermal barrier quality components were extracted from corresponding literature and provided by our industrial partners. To simulate the crack, uh, crack development along two interfaces, the bilinear cohesive zone model uh, was used. Uh, the result of find element model calculation performed uh, for regular and irregular TGO profile uh, allows us to determine the potential crack initiation seeds to predict the tight temperature conditions and uh, to analyze the mode of fracture. By uh, fine elements modeling, we can also obtain the stress distribution in each layer of thermal barrier coating system. For, uh, you can see here the distribution uh, into TGO, thermal grown oxide. And for more details, uh, for more detailed results, I'd like to recommend you to see our presentation for uh, first virtual conference on fracture uh, on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can see also our related uh, work. The recommended uh, paper for this page, part and uh, reference of our, to our works. And uh, I like to I'd like to conclude with this theme uh, about the complex approaches with this, which is needed in order to characterize the failed behavior in uh, different uh, type of uh, such as thermal barrier coating system for different coating system and oxide layers, protective oxide layers in order to prevent the degradation. Uh, and uh, I'd like to conclude with the idea that the actual research trends are always interfacial, I would like to say, always interfacial, and we need to build the collaboration with other partners from different areas of research. We need to build international co uh, collaboration. This is very interesting work, and um, I would like to Thank you for your attention, um, and um, I would like to send thanks to my uh, partners, scientific partners from uh, uh, Sibiro Federal University, uh, from um, Federal Research Center for Information and Computational Technology, and from uh, laboratories uh, from France, from Toulouse and Paris. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention.